Now I think was wonderful and please it will friend that also we have had a long relationship from University of Florida. We started all our activities with an international education center which take a shape now with one agriculture one science. Thanks for allowing other universities to join in this particular initiative which we have started long back. And he's the director for the international programs at University of Florida. Whatever you prefer, like if you prefer to Thank you. I don't have a PowerPoint, maybe. No, no PowerPoint. Thank you. Bring my water just in case. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I would like to thank my colleagues from the, our fellow Legrand universities in the U.S. for allowing me to be our, our spokesperson for this. I'm being this, I'm here as a spokesperson for my great university in the U.S., not for the University of Florida. I'll leave that to uh, Dr. Reddy and Al as well. Uh, but thank you very much for this opportunity. What I would like to do is just uh, express my remarks and, and um, focus on three areas that I think are important in terms of bringing this group together. One is education and the fact that demand for higher education particularly continues to grow everywhere. Uh, you can look at developed nations, developing nations, and the uh, OECD, OECD data shows quite clearly that demands on tertiary education are continuing to grow. Uh, science, high quality science is being conducted, conducted increasingly everywhere. It's not only the advanced research institutions any longer in North America or Europe that have the best labs or the best programs. We're finding more and more that institutions like the Science, many of the advanced research institutions in India, China, Brazil, uh, South Africa, etc. We're finding extremely high quality science being conducted basically everywhere. And then partnerships. The importance of a, of a meeting like this is the fact that we're able to bring together degree granting institutions like our universities, the, like the land grant universities in the states as well as our, our partner institutions here in India. And this partnership with the CGIR, with National Agricultural Research System, with entrepreneurial organizations like EDCAS, I think it's important that we, we get together and we talk about what are the, the issues, the problems that we're facing, and how do we better prepare future generations to confront those problems. What, what I would like to do is just mention a few examples of how we work in the U.S. You may, we do compete quite often for, for what's turned out to be a dwindling uh, out of funds for universities, particularly agriculture and natural resource um, higher education in the U.S. We also work very closely together. And much of our capability to work together comes through an association that we refer to as APLU, it's the Association for Public and Land Grant Universities, which is made up of over 200 uh, universities and, and associated partners in the U.S. And 75 of those partners are land grant universities. Every one of the 50 U.S. states has a land grant university that may have a minority serving university as well. Which, become, which is part of the land grant system. And much of our work, particularly for the issues, the challenges we're facing with food security, uh, with, with water, uh, with energy, uh, health, et cetera, comes from our government. And much of it comes from the Agency of International Development. And so we will often uh, entertain proposals, solicitations from the U.S. government for work in food security, water issues, health issues, et cetera. And often, it will not be a single university, it will be a, a consortium of universities that will then compete for those funds. And I will mention a few successful ones that are presently uh, in operation. One is focused on the higher education capacity development in Tanzania, that's funded through the USA mission. It's led by the Ohio State University with the University of Florida, Michigan State University, Iowa State University, uh, uh, Virginia Tech and Tuskegee as members of that consortium. And our goal is to help build up Sokaini Agriculture University, its capabilities for, for uh, improved higher education and, and research together with its national research system. And we're training 100 students at the MS level and 20 uh, PhD students across various uh, academic disciplines important to agriculture and natural resources. Part of that partnership includes also partnerships with, for example, PAU and some other Indian universities. So
some of the uh, African scientists from Tanzania are being sent not necessarily just to U.S. universities, the ones I mentioned, but also to uh, advanced universities in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as in India. And there's quite a significant partnership with PLU. I know some of my colleagues from Ohio State will be at PLU next week. Uh, Mark Erbal and Dave Hansen will be there. And so those types of opportunities are similar to this in the sense that it's really encouraging, it's giving resources, of course resources are limited, giving resources for us to work across nations, across disciplines and across institutions that are both higher education and research focused. Uh, there are others, for example, one experiment we're running right now with SIP, the International Potato Center, is we have an on online agroecology master's degree at the University of Florida. And that agroecology degree could be through our soil and water science department that Dr. Reddy is the chair of, or it could be through our agronomy department. So we have three scientists, three master's candidates, who are in Peru and Ecuador doing field research with sci local scientists through SIP as well as the, the national systems in those two countries. They're collecting their data over two years of research work, but doing all their coursework online. And so they're going to be able to get, do a master's thesis, do research in the field, working with national systems as well as with the CGIR, and enable them to produce the masters. So we think that, that that type of model may be something that partnerships like this might facilitate in the future. Um, there, is, there are other programs like Innovate. It's Innovation for Agricultural Training and Education. It's led by Virginia Tech University with Penn State and University of Florida as partners. Uh, there is another one that's uh, MIAS, Modernizing Extension Advisory Services, which is led by Illinois. A brand new, brand new one we have is called Integrating Gender and Nutrition in Agriculture Systems, um, um, Agriculture Extension Systems. And that's a new program that's focusing first on four countries, Bangladesh, Zambia, Senegal, and Honduras. And it's where we're working with local partners, and, and, and CJIR is, is part of many of the centers are part of that effort as well, where we're trying to integrate better the gender and nutrition focus in the research programs on food security, primarily. Okay, well, thank you very much. I just wanted to mention some of the ways that we work together to, and, and um, the opportunities that we have in this type of partnership to do some experimentation as well. Thank you. Thank you all. Even it's good to know like how the land grant state university is working together as part of association of public land grant state universities, APLU. And we were having a representative at Walpole Bay Symposium. They have also identified the importance of this kind of consortium to bring different kind of regions together. Thank you all for allowing us to know a little bit what APLU is. Thank you.